Daniel Ricciardo finally outqualifies his teammate, thanks probably to the power of Stroop Waffles. Lewis Hamilton only gets booed a little bit. And of course, Max Verstappen takes pole at the Dutch Grand Prix in Zandvoort. G'day there. My name is James and welcome to Lakeside Drive's F1 podcast for this a pre-drinks episode ahead of the Dutch Grand Prix. By my friends and yours, the two Thomases, the far right leaning liberal. G'day, Campy. Boys, how are we? <laughs> and the middle leaning, whatever, pick a party of your choice, Tommy if T. You're du- hello. If you're not Dutch, you're not much. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a home, co- a home Grand Prix, your proper home Grand Prix, because Australia's never going to happen again. Tommy never. T, what were your overall thoughts about it? Just seeing all the fans there and uh, clearly. It's the best track in the world, obviously. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, it's a bloody <laughs> ripper. It, it looks awesome. I would love to drive that track. Um, the setting's amazing near the beach in the sand dunes. Looks amazing. Like the Stroop waffle, like you mentioned. Like, tell me I'm wrong. This is the best one we've got. This is the best GP. Yeah, it's not just yeah. Well, certainly, it's not just the best track. It looks like the best country in the world to be in at the moment. It does. No one gives a oh. damn about any of these. Uh. <laughs> there was oh. about one point seven million people just in the main straight alone worth of fans. So good. Love it. I have never seen a track so full of one color in my life. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that every time Max went around the track, they all stood up and then applauded him. It was kind of like this progressive Dutch wave, I suppose, (laughs) uh, as as they went around. Really, really good to see. Uh, And, of course, we need a little bit of a lift, don't we, after the Belgian Grand Prix, which was an absolute interesting time. Although if I hear the word farce and Belgian Grand Prix used in the same sentence (laughs) one more time, I will yeet myself. I believe Uh, you were the one that said that about 15 times on last week's podcast, Jim. No, I didn't say fast, did I? Well, I must put myself in the bin. Oh, wait. I'm you do say yeet here. a lot, though, don't you? On all of your podcast oh, yeah, formats, don't unfortunately you? Unfortunately, entered into my vocabulary when discussing motorsport, and I can't get rid Accidentally. of it. Accidentally. Send help. <laughs> Uh, big thank you to you, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube for subscribing. We've had a couple of people uh, join since our last podcast. We are chasing a 1,000 subs by the end of the year to please the algorithm. If you haven't already, it costs you nothing and helps us a lot. So please uh, do that. You can hit those buttons and do something down there. Campy also doesn't know what it does, but he is. We nice logged in on his computer and did it. it. It's all good. <laughs> uh, boys, let's talk about a little bit of news before we talk about the actual practice and then qualifying because it is now the world's worst kept secret in Formula One at least that Valtteri Bottas is leaving uh, Mercedes and George Russell is going in. The thought process is that VB is going to Alfa Romeo but Alfa want to wait to Monza so they can announce him in Italy and (coughs) then George will be announced to go to Mercedes and then potentially Albon to Williams. Uh, Tommy T, let's go to you first. What are your thoughts on that whole situation? I'm I'm just sick of the cryptic. It's like I will be in a Mercedes powered car. I know where I'm driving next. It's just just tell us, mate. Just get it over with. I think, but like the media love this just as much because they get to write stories for the next however long till we get to Monza. So yep. everyone's kind of winning in that part, except for the fans who were just like, "Can you just decide and just frigging tell us?" <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm. I'm excited for the prospect of George v. Lewis next year. I think that'll make it really interesting. And I'm happy that VB's still around. I don't know if that's where I would have wanted to be. I probably would have wanted to be in the Williams like we've been suggesting. I think that's probably got more upside and kind of a bit of a a full circle to his kind of career. It would be nice to go back to Williams and do some stuff there. But I think he's going to be able to show, like Kimmy did in that car, how good he is um, in comparison to the young drivers they're going to be throwing through Sauber and that program. So all in all, I think we kind of assumed that something like this was going to happen. It was kind of inevitable. It's just been like, can you hurry up and get out, make it official? Campy, what do you think? Uh, I think it would be in the coffin, in uh, the nail in the coffin for Giovinazzi, if I'm honest. He's going to get absolutely spanked next year if uh, VB is his teammate. But, yeah, I'll meet with Tommy, just announce it. We all know what's happening by this point. Um, We have to read between the lines. We know Williams are looking for a driver, which means um, 
with their conversations with Albon, reportedly. Um, apparently, Mercedes has been ringing Albon saying, no, don't take the drive. But Red Bull's confirmed that at least two teams are looking at Albon. So we know what we do know is that is um, George Russell is moving teams because there's a spot mm. open at Williams. That otherwise, they wouldn't be having mm. conversations yeah. about who's going to drive there next year. Um, yeah. Oh, look, I'm, I, I'm – I've got a bit of a grudge against George Russell. It's probably just because of the way the commentators are talking. And it's just been George <laughs> Russell, George Russell, George Russell spam. How good is this guy on my yeah. face? Um, we don't, the chosen one. Well, I, I, I think he is at the moment and he'll probably go on to be a really good driver. But the thing is, is we don't, we still, in my mind, we still don't know enough about George Russell. He's driving to Williams, which for the better part of the three years he's been there, has been fighting for 19th and 20th position respectively. This year they've made a jump. Now, we don't know whether that car's got another three and a half, four tenths in it. You'd presume not, but that's what we're talking about. He still could be a C-grade driver and we don't really know. Um, but he's setting headlines in a Williams car. It's not going too well. So, But then last night he binned it, which I just thought was ironic. We just heard about <laughs> Surely thereafter, though, his teammate then also binned it too. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's clear the wind changed and stuff happened. But, um, yeah, look, good on George, I think. Yep. Be a good fight. Yeah. So, okay. So let's talk, though. Valtteri, though, uh, has strong links to Fred Vasseur, who is obviously the team principal of Alfa Romeo. That's good news for him. I kind of agree with you, Tommy T. It would have been nice to see him back at Williams. But quite honestly, I think also he would probably see that as more of a step or like a big step back and down. Mm. Whereas we know Sauber have were, you know, years and years ago when they were blue and yellow were the absolute worst team. They were the Hass of the grid currently. Yeah. Uh, and they made real progression. And Ericsson was there when Charles Leclerc was there and that car was good. You yep. know, this is uh, Drive to Survive season one. Uh, with, if, if you know, there wasn't Formula One before that, obviously. Um, but that whole <laughs> era proved to be really good. And Charles Leclerc, his drive in that year solidified his Ferrari seat. So yep. potentially with these changes, regulation changes for next year, like we literally don't know what's going to happen. We know yep. that Sauber is out of being under the thumb of Ferrari in terms of that seat position. So they are able to look at replacing one old fin with another old fin. That's, you know, good. Well done, guys. Uh, but it's going to be good for VB to get that opportunity to drive. Does Giovinazzi stay? Well, Fred has said he's got a couple of races to prove himself. He's qualifying today or last night really showed that he has some potential still. The Italian Jesus element, I think, is is well liked around the mm. paddock. But we know that Nick DeVries is being connected to the other seat potentially. And, of course, Alex Albon to Williams. As you said, Campy, that has been really the contentious point and really now the obvious, you know, showing their obvious hand that uh, he, George Russell is moving on from there, as you said. But it's more, and Tommy T and I spoke about this before, it's more the off-track Karen and Toto conversation, which is being a little bit ridiculous about the whole Albon thing. Now, Toto said Albon must be free of this Red Bull contract if he wants to sign with Williams. He's also said that he quite likes Alex and thinks he's a good driver. So it's not about Alex being a Red Bull driver. It's just Alex cannot be a part of the Red Bull team and drive for Williams. He has to cut ties. And Tommy yeah. T, if I'm him, I'm cutting ties quicker than anything else and getting the hell, hell out yeah. of that place. Get me out of the thumb of Dr. Helmet and let me go to the winning machine that is Mercedes umbrella. Let's do this. I think that is a clear decision that he should make. I mean, does he want to drive DTM? Does he want to keep doing all that kind of stuff? No, he wants to be back in Formula One. Yep. Williams are on the up. He's going to have a great power unit. He's going to have the might of Toto and everything he does still managing. Like that is the dream scenario for Alex right now. And don't yeah. underestimate his performance in DTM as well. His last two races yep. have been absolute. like the one at the Nürburgring. He controlled that race and he looked like he was like Lewis from 2016. Um, yep. 10 seconds far, far, uh, faster than everybody on track. Um, you know, got a restart past seven cars on the first lap. He had a, yeah, I believe he had an accident yesterday and still qualified fifth with 25 extra kilos in the car. So, I mean, this kid, it took him half a year to get used to it, but now that he's he's in it and he understands the, uh, the formula and – and the car that he's driving, he's – I think he deserves a spot on the grid. But it also, for mm. me, 
What about drivers up and coming and coming in? Uh, you know, we've got two spots open on the grid. One should go to Valtteri because he's proved himself and he should mm-hmm. be on the grid. He's <clears throat> by far the most competent person without a seat for next year. But, yeah. you know, we normally see other drivers come in from younger categories when – Positions open mm. up on the grid from these other ones. So, I yep. mean, we got Piastri. Well, we got Oscar Piastri. He's leading the championship. Yeah. If he wins this year, he's not eligible to drive in F two or F three in this single seater categories anywhere throughout the you know in Europe anyway. Um, the next year, which I think is not great for his career. I think you'll get it. I think you'll get a drive in F one eventually. But I don't want to see him miss out on a year of racing. Bit like Stoffel Van Dorn. He sat out a whole mm. year and didn't do much, waited for that McLaren seat. And when he got in it, yes, he was coming up against Fernando Alonso and he, he shit the bed in qualifying. His race pace wasn't great. I, I worry for Piastri that he's, you know, if he wins this year, I think he should get a drive in F1 next year. And that's no teams are talking about him. I haven't heard any mm. any driver market talking about him. Guan Zhou's been heavily linked. He brings yeah. – he, Guangzhou reportedly brings um, thirty million um, dollars with oh. him to any team, which is going to look good mm. when we got a budget cap yep. of one hundred and forty odd million yep. next year. Um, yep. it, there's there's a lot of variables, but Guangzhou is no better than Piastri. I mean, the last time they raced, I think Guangzhou touched him up, but that was the first time this season Guangzhou's looked anywhere near as capable as he has in previous yeah. two years. I think Oscar's has got way more upside too. He's still so young. Oh. Juan Joe's been in the in the game for a while longer and just kind of <clears> is <throat> what he is now. Oscar's so raw still. He's got so much potential. I, I don't think yeah. I've made my I've made my comments known about China and Formula One and whether we should go there and have anything to do with that country as a sport. And absolutely not. Just because a guy brings thirty million dollars. I mean Money talks, bullshit walks. We know that, but but it also comes campy, doesn't it, to the management side as well? And yep. I don't, I mean, I have no idea who the manager is for Guan, but I know that obviously we have Mark Webber managing uh, Piastri, and like Mark Webber is one of the guys. Obviously, he's still relevant in the paddock because he's a commentator for Channel Four, but he raced for Williams, he raced for Red Bull. He's you know he's got tentacles all over the place of being able to reach into teams and say, "Hey, this is what we're doing." And if I was him. I would be saying to Oscar, it or it doesn't matter if you don't if you win this year, fantastic, great, you on the trot, and potentially we can get you a seat, you know, Latifi's seat in the year after next. Mm-hmm. But if if he wasn't to win, and I think you're right, Kev, if he wasn't to win, he comes P two. Mark would say, excellent. Well, you've got a whole other year of racing. Yep. Let's not freak yeah. out here because we know that Fernando Alonso is signed for that extra year. So Ocon has as a contact contract extension will pass that. If Guanjuzo goes to Alpha, it removes him from the Renault pool of being in the way of Piastri. So that's yep. the upside, yep. right? And he might come into Formula 1 and ha- be no good, be, you know, the... The Sonoda that we've seen have a good one or two races and then just be really inconsistent for the rest of the time. I'm here for Albon to come back. Um, also, if Albon and Nick Latifi are Williams, it will be the nicest team on the grid. Everyone will be happy. <laughs> They'll all be cuddling each other. Campy will love it. Uh, if I end up getting to a race next year, the first thing I will do is go down there and interview everyone. Um, and I will accept that Albon is a tyre driver and not a British driver, as I said in if I end up anywhere near Formula One, I'm never interviewing British drivers. Put yourselves in the bin. You get way too much love. But Albon, <laughs> I'll accept. I'll accept the Thai flag. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's really good. And I'm glad for Alex because, as, as I just said, Tommy, it's good to, to cut ties at a Red Bull. Go do your yeah. own thing because he could come and do a great job in Williams. We saw him like Toro Rosso, China 2019, that race. He was on fire. The reason why they promoted him into the senior team is because he was performing like Gasly in the Toro yep. Rosso. So yep. he could perform in the Williams. Williams might be making huge steps, as I said uh, a couple of months ago. They could be a front-running car next year. Like, we just don't know. And wouldn't that be great for him, giving him the middle finger to Helmut Marco <laughs> and Karen oh, Horner amazing. as he sails past some Red Bulls and Alpha Tauris. Can we just Love talk that. on Perez after his performance? Particularly, yes. Uh, yeah, particularly go Particularly last week and this week. I mean, not in getting out of Q, uh, Q1. Was it Q1 or Q2 he didn't get out of? This is going well so far, Campy. Do Sorry. tell me more. I just know he, <laughs> I just know he qualified. Yes. He qualified terribly. 16th, so yeah, he so didn't get Q1. out of one. The gap, 
I, I'm beginning to question whether Perez is up to the task of being that second driver at Red Bull. I hands down think he's a better driver than any other second driver that's been there um, since Daniel Ricciardo moved on. Uh, not that Danny Rick was a second driver, but his performances, particularly in qualifying, are starting to shape up like we've seen from Gasly and Albon. Yeah. And I think we just seriously need to start having that same conversation again about Perez, is he that good? Has he got the talent to match it? And clearly on his performances this year, absolutely not. I mean, his race craft seems to be barely good, but we're on a track that you cannot pass on tonight. I think we might yeah. see some exchanges on the opening couple of laps, um, and I think strategy will play a big role in um, how they go. But I don't, I don't see him passing seven or eight cars to get into the points playing positions, one or two points. It's just not going to happen. Not yep. with not with the gaps on the grid in qualifying. I mean, we're talking about 1.1 1. 1 second between I mean, the top the top yeah. 13 cars or whatever it was. And, you know, all those top cars in the top 13 had produced times over the weekend that were indicative of them being in the top 10. So I just can't see it happening. Um, and I think also because of – his little mishap on the way to the grid last weekend, which inevitably meant he went from the points to not in the points, it's it's put Red Bull at a deficit. I mean, they're 303.5 points, which just pisses me off. Oh, half that's a point, so annoying. To Mercedes 310.5, uh, you know, every point counts. And little, little mistakes like that, they cannot afford. But it's almost, Tommy T, we were saying this before we started recording, it's the opposite to Ocon. Ocon had his yeah. chassis number shaved off by Campy and now is... <laughs> Feeling much happier about life and got a win yep. and is is performing. He got quite his well. contract He's, signed and he was he was good. Like and he had a bit of a down. Are putting it together again, you know, yeah. they're, they're they're finding their rhythm. Fernando's done a huge job at being able to to bring that ship along. But I think you're right, Campy. Uh, yeah. And it's been noted that Perez is qualifying just hasn't been as good. Uh, I mean, and he hasn't it, settled. Well, that's why it's I'd never like been to his strength, Bodasco, though, yeah. right? It's never been like what. Checo's been great at. He's always been better at sneaking positions on race day and doing those kind of things. I think it's it's come to the time where we have to go, is Max just that much better in that car than everyone else? Because it's what, four getting on five drivers now who have been unable to get even remotely close to Max. Is this guy just that much better than everyone else? Um, or or is it that we've just had five drivers now that can't, can't do the same thing in that car and it just aren't as good? I think it, it's... it's I think it's the caliber of drivers they put up against him. Yeah, Danny Rick that went toe to toe with that guy for three years and came out on top for two and a half of those years. I mean, the last mm. half of his final year was his mechanical absolute yeah. nightmare for what seemed to yeah. be ten races in a row. Um, and with grid positions and you know penalties that came in, it you know just it looked bad on paper uh, when mm. you look at those results. But I think it's the caliber of driver they put next to him every time. I don't think Albon, Gasly. Perez and who else was there? Kvyat. I oh, know he was beforehand, wasn't he? Anyway, they they don't stack up to me anywhere near what a Daniel Ricciardo is. And I think for Red Bull, I think they need to take a punt on Bottas. I think they need to can the contract extension that they gave to Perez and take Bottas because he's a genuine, serious option for Red Bull moving forward, particularly in constructors' championships. Because the drivers mm. have had, they're just not going to win it with their second driver. So. And we know what us, he's going up against Hamilton. And sometimes he misses it and he comes off second best. But, you know, those three or four times out of ten when he gets to compete against Lewis straight up, he's going to get the job done. And whether that be in qualifying, most of it's in qualifying, but we see it on the races occasionally. Um, I would hope for Valtteri that he goes away and wins four or five out of the last 12. And that suspense, you know, cements his position on the grid with a top team for next year and in Red Bull because I, I think they've got to pull the trigger because Perez ain't working out. Yeah. Well, it's certainly interesting. Let's Before we start talking about individual drivers further, let's talk about the practice session and how it was Red Flag Central. Camper, you said if you were a betting man, which you are, uh, you would put money on the fact that there would be red flags this race. How many do you think? Uh, or are we just going to see stacks of safety cars and lots of brooms pushing gravel off the track? What on earth are we pulling out a red, car, a red flag for in qualifying <laughs> last night because someone went off the track and put some stones on there? Give me a break. <laughs> 
What is our sport turning into? Got broom, shovel, and gravel off the turn. Oh, yeah, they'll spin into it. Take a different line. It's just the way. That, oh, it's, yeah, I mean, look. I don't I, think the I car understand. was stationary before the red was out. I understand. We, <laughs> no. I understand that we have to be safety conscious, but this is just beginning. You know, we're freaking out over. I mean, we'll get red flags for tire, flat tires soon, cars driving on the grid. You know, with three well, the, wheels. it can't have been a red flag because he drove it back, and he was about to go back into qualifying until they found some yeah. other fault. Who cares? So it, how how red flagged can it be? Who cares yeah, if really. there's stones on the track? That's <laughs> uh, just I love it. We're a bunch of fans. And then his teammate proceeded to do the same same thing, and yeah. we just ended, which is pretty brutal. So who who were the drivers that kind of didn't get their second run in Norris. for Q two? Norris and and. No, Perez wasn't even close, was he? He missed out. Yeah. He wasn't even Compl- there. Yeah, he wasn't even there. So pr- pretty rough on those guys. But also, like, that's – we we said at the start of qualifying or <clears throat> we were talking about, it was so important to get a banker lap in because the likelihood of a red flag or a yellow in qualifying was so high. There was mm. no, like, oh, we'll just wait, come out of the garage really late and just put one lap in and we'll be fine. It was get out early, get a lap in the bank, and then hopefully that's good enough and hopefully you can improve later. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Danny Rick because uh, he outqualified his teammate and that's the first time in a long time, brings it to 8-5 in terms of the outqualifying positions. It was good news for him, wasn't it, in Q1 and Q2? He was finding some real rhythm and some pace. As I said, it's because he's being powered by Stroopwafels. Michael Italiano has been shoveling Stroopwafels into his head since the Belgian Grand Prix. <laughs> it's been a whole thing. Stroopwafel, yep. Danny Rick. That's a, just a match made in heaven, evidently. Uh, but in terms of what he was doing on the track, it all seemed good, didn't it, for the first couple. But Q3, Campy, he kind of just couldn't figure out what was going on. Yeah, obviously there were some changes from – to the track conditions from uh, Q2 to Q3. We saw that with both uh, Williams crashing out. Um, yeah, Danny Rick, if he had have done his Q2 time in Q3, it would have put him about uh, – would have put him seventh, I believe, so seventh or eighth. And if he had have improved by even three tenths, it would have put him in the top five, which is where he was looking to be. Um, he was super frustrated after it. He said, I just – I built up and I got to the point where the car was feeling the best I'd felt it all weekend. And we know Danny Rick. He's got a proven record of pulling times out of his backside. No matter how far behind he's been Norris um, this year um, – yeah, it was a shame to watch. He was super frustrated. He's like, I don't know what happened. The car just went away from me. We had it perfectly. But just shows the, the minute details in these cars and how they can, you know, just wind and change of wind direction just affects the whole idea aerodynamics of the car mm. and, and, and the angles in which the wind's hitting the car going through certain corners. Uh, it's a shame mm. Danny Rick would be frustrated. And he said he was frustrated afterwards. Um, he probably wants consistency in this car, but mm. I think he's turned a page. He's definitely turned a page for me. He's yep. uh, he's adapted and he's getting better. Is he there yet? Absolutely not. I think even well, if we spoke to him tomorrow, he'd say, no, I've still got at least, you know, another 15% improvement on where yep. I can be in this car, which should scare the shit out of Norris. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because well, Norris, it was really interesting. he's not adapting to this car very well since some of the changes they've made since the, uh, since the mid-season yeah. break. Well, he, well on that point. We've got a brand new track basically because it's been refitted and there's brand new sections and banking. And it's very interesting to see some of the more experienced drivers come out and adapt to a brand new circuit with very limited laps in comparison to someone like Lando who seemed to be struggling all weekend, didn't he? Yeah, well, he wasn't eating Stroopwafels. As a duchy, can you tell me <laughs> why Stroopwafels bring out superpowers in some F1 drivers? I don't know. It's just a combination of like gluten and caramel, I think. <laughs> I think it's so- <laughs> it's just magical. I really want one. I'm sitting here watching like all of the socials uh, for you can get Italiano him at Aldi, and mate. stuff. And it's so – I messaged Italiano <laughs> last night. I was like, clearly the difference we've outperforming teammate is Stroop Waffles and you're feeding Danny Rick. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Keep doing that. He comes back and goes, yeah, the problem is that I keep eating them too and I've had bloody heaps <laughs> since being here. No, I want real, one so badly. The real question is, is what Zach <laughs> – Brown's pronunciation of Stroop Waffles. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is the content we need. <laughs> if you're from the US and you're listening, or Canada, even Mason, I'm looking at you, please send us an audio recording of you saying Stroop Waffle. Uh, please. We'll put it up in the podcast tomorrow. Carlos. Really Love that. Carlos. <laughs> Renault. Carlos. Carlos. Stroop Waffle. 
<laughs> uh, look, Gasly out of the bin again. Um, in fact, he wasn't in the bin to begin with. Campy, uh, Tommy T and I have snuck into the dumpster yard and take him yes. out of the bin permanently. I think uh, he's exempt from the bin, man. P4. He is just doing, I mean, again, he's outperforming oh. Perez. So he's he's really, really comfortable with this car, isn't he, Tommy T? Can we make the second Red Bull car an Alpha Tauri? The first Alpha Tauri. Instead, instead, <laughs> instead of a Red Bull car. Just change just the livery. Whatever, just change it. Just <laughs> repaint the thing because whatever call. they're doing with that second chassis is shit house. Good call. That piece, he's on fire. He's making Sonoda look very second rate. Um, yes, sir. I don't know what's happened to him. He's fallen off a cliff and he's fallen right out of my fantasy team, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm going to edit that to say he's yeah. fallen right out of my fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, Gasly's, Gasly's out of control. He's he's doing so well at the moment. Um, I, I you don't expect it, and every week you're like, oh, he, he can't, he can't do it again, and he does really well every week in qualifying. He is the Can't true be- Mister Saturday. Shut up, Sky F1. No oh one cares about your British God. drivers anymore. Uh, all right. Well, uh, do you want to talk about? Ex Bin Campy, ex Bin Gasly. Oh, he's performing as he should be as an F1 driver, as far up the boot as he possibly <laughs> can. So good on him. This is where you should be <laughs> every weekend. No, well, that, get back in the bin, you no, squiddy well, squib. Uh, we know that car is quick over one lap. Um, it's a bit like the Williams. The Williams super quick over one lap. The race pace is not as good. But Alpha Terry this year have made gains to be that true sister team with Gasly behind mm. the wheel. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're achieving their objective, objectives. You can't, you can't complain with that. So, and kudos to Gasly. I'm, mate, I'm not here. I don't want to see people fail. I want to see them succeed. Um, Tommy T, and speaking he of is people definitely failing, succeeding. Um, have you have you ever watched Lord of the Rings? You know what Lord of the Rings is, don't you? If I said yeah. Aragon to you, you'd understand. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just making sure. Plenty of people in the Discord will understand what we're talking about. If you don't know what we're talking about and you're not in the Discord, jump in the Discord and find out. There's a good uh, little. So someone rant put you. someone put a photo of the Pokemon up there last night. I can assure you, <laughs> I know what that is, and I've yeah. got a great story about. It. Someone put up this. <laughs> Here we go. picture of a cat and it was sleeping. And it was a Mew. Is that what it was? <laughs> I don't know. Is that what it was, Jim? Yes, it was. I've got a good story about said, that. Yeah. I've never, watched, po- Mew. I've never watched Pokemon in my life. But there's a kid. I bought I bought a Mew card off him in, in high school for 10 bucks. And the first thing I did was just rip it up because I was like, it's mine now. I ripped it up. <laughs> I was like, Pokemon cards suck. <laughs> is anyone surprised that Campy is the bully from like oh, some no. children's movie? Should be allowed to have children himself, to be honest. Uh, that was the worst <laughs> tangent I've heard in any of our stories. Sorry, uh, I, I there's many. To <laughs> I cutting that out. I got that reference? Yeah, <laughs> got, okay. Bad. Got the, well, you're pretty bad. Uh, anyway, continuing on. Sorry, listener. Sorry that you had to hear that. The other, uh, the other big surprise was Ferrari this weekend yeah, uh, because they were really nowhere for a, a while, and then suddenly Leclerc and Sainz fifth and sixth. And I think if Sainz didn't have his big off, he probably would have had a little more confidence uh, because he's sure. generally, I think, he's been outperforming Charles for a while. But in this, this is the other, other way around. Campy, talk to us about Ferrari. I thought Sainz's qualifying was over after that crash in Q three. Just yeah. looked. Just looked big. Um, yeah, Ferrari. I think this track suits them and suits their car. It's a very Monaco-esque type of track. Um, you know, short, sharp, uh, not power sensitive, more more downforce the better. Uh, hence why the Red Bull's performing. Um, but um, we're talking about Ferrari. So, yeah, I think they'd be really stoked with their position. They're ahead of both McLarens, and that's what they want. They're looking at constructors' points, and they're looking at that third in that world championship. Do I think they can contend for a podium? No, I don't think so, but um, good for both of them. I think they're really evenly matched drivers, those two. Um, Yeah. That's actually probably the battle we like watching. As the season's progressed, I thought Sainz would start to dominate him a bit more, but Sainz is a bit like Danny Rick in the sense that he has those. He has these sessions and these bad, these bad sessions from time to time. We're just like, where did that come from? Which mm. tells me still not totally one hundred percent at grips with that car. I think. I think. I think the whole year and going into next year, I think it's going to be a completely different thing for Sainz and Leclerc. But yeah. they are very evenly matched and very capable of uh, uh, getting the Ferrari the championships they want. 
Well, the three and yeah. a half points, bloody half points behind half McLaren points. at the moment for constructors. And with Norris down in 13th and these guys in the mid pack, yeah. as you said, Campy, this is going to be a difficult track to pass on. But Ferrari might be able to pick up the pieces. Uh, Tommy T, that's also the same for Gasly, really. If something happens at the front, yeah. then he could be on for a podium. But yeah, Ferrari, what did you think of Charles' performance this weekend? Solid. He He's always a good qualifier. We know that. I think they are going to be the, the team that slips back in the order throughout the race. They're going to be that gap between the leaders, probably, I would have thought. Probably Gasly, actually. Um, but yeah, to be honest, the other one we're not talking about in seventh is Italian Jesus. Yes, yes. Let's, well, he is on the list next if you were to look at the run sheet. Never. Uh, <laughs> Why would I do that? It's prepared. <laughs> Giovinazzi. <laughs> Let's just continue to jump then. Giovinazzi. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Italian Jesus, as I said at the beginning, he has a couple of races to prove why he deserves the current seat. It was kind of this time last year that they had the same conversations, uh, Alfa Romeo, about keeping yep. him. Uh, and he, when they confirmed both Kimi and Giovinazzi, that was that was good, I think, for his confidence level. This will be even better. Seventh position, Tommy T. He needed it, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, I think they just told him, like, hey, your seat's in jeopardy. He was like, oh. I should probably wake up and try. I'll, <laughs> I'll stop lounging around Monaco and just being Italian Jesus and hanging out and doing whatever he does. He just decided to put in some effort and he's done well. He's, he's come off his gap year and he's back, which we love. You were Australian <laughs> Jesus for a while, Tommy. Did you ever meet or what? Never. <laughs> no, I would have loved to meet. I don't think we can meet now that I've cut my hair. I'm the Jesus to convention. That's well, it. Yeah. You couldn't get to it. You had to had to Skype. No, in. I had to quarantine. Yeah. No, <laughs> wasn't worth it. <laughs> uh yeah, no, good for Geo. Look at it. and again, because it's a non-passing track potentially, he gets to hold uh, a points position, which is good for Alfa Romeo went to chase down Williams points hall, isn't it? Uh, we know that. I want to talk about Seb Mazepin Schumacher. Uh, I really pissed off because I actually took out Carlos Sainz from a fantasy team because I didn't think his car was going to be ready in time for quality and put in Seb. Uh, and reshuffled and also put in George. So that was a terrible decision by me. Classic. <laughs> but Seb just really, he was on it as well. I think he definitely would have made it into Q2, no doubt. But this Mazepin Schumacher little debacle. Tommy T, what's happening with bloody Mazepin throwing Schumacher under the bus? Well, he's saying it was his turn to be the the driver leading out and they switched and got he got overtaken or something. No one knows like what the rules, no one cares really what's going on. Who those cares two. about like, us and what their team strategy is? Exactly. Who can remember who like got to go first in qualifying last year? I bet you the team doesn't even remember that actually that much. <laughs> They're like, I don't know, one of you, like, just figure it Who out cares? amongst You're yourselves. You're going to be 19th and 20th anyways. I yeah, said, just stay in the pits. Save your fuel and tires. Save the money, team. Just stay <laughs> Shumi's there. probably don't like, you're bother. not going to out-qualify me anyway, mate. So no. what are you worried about? Unbelievable. Um, but so dangerous. Yeah, and, and Seb was coming in hot and just had to completely abort his lap, basically. So, yeah, you hate to say, I, I don't know, was there a penalty given? Oh, who knows? I don't know, but I mean, it, I assume. But fact it's you move from nineteenth to twentieth. Who knows? Like sick. Yeah. Um. No one cares. But yeah, I, I, I feel for Seb because he was performing way better than Stroll, but it didn't shake out that way yep. based on uh, the results. Yeah, and Stroll finishing in twelfth too. But as you said, Campy, who cares? But otherwise, Seb Seb is getting his his life together, isn't he? In terms of being big in the time. Car. Yeah, and oh, just absolutely. like being just general good guy Seb all the time, which we love. Yes. Out there being a firefighter, saving the world. <laughs> just, I don't know. He's doing he's doing everything right now. Everyone has forgotten about Multi-21. All right, can I just put that out there? If anyone <laughs> says I still don't like him because of Multi-21, <laughs> no, nah, I don't care anymore. I've got over it. I've moved on with my life. Mark's moved on. I'm happy for Seb. I genuinely am. Um, he's also really just stopped caring how he looks. Have you noticed that? Yeah. He's just like full unshaven. Let it go. Long hair, yeah. whatever. I'm, got, I'm Love married it. with kids. I'm all over it. I'm a bead fine with my bee juice. I'm a happy boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, Latifi and Russell, that was an interesting part for, for Williams because they really have started to show some pace, show some strength, haven't they? Uh, and this, this is going to be on really for a, a third good race in a row, even though last weekend wasn't a proper Grand Prix. But Campy, the, the progression that Williams has made do you think it out warrants, or do you think it warrants really the points haul that they've actually received, or do you think? I mean, last weekend, obviously, that second half place, second place, it wasn't really deserved, but they really went off chops about it, didn't they? Yeah, I think they celebrated a bit too much. I mean, as an organisation, they'll take the points any day of the week. Mm. Um, I think if it had it played out like track conditions and and we had mm. the race last weekend, I don't think either of them were even in the hunt for points. They were that 
their race pace is that far off. This track suits their setup a bit more. Um, last week was a whole different kettle of fish with um, car designs and lay, uh, track layout, super power sensitive. It, they just don't have it on a track lock spa. Um, but good on them. They, they, they're, making the, they're making the jump up the grid, which is what we wanted them. We didn't want them to be three seconds behind in qualifying and then yep. getting overlapped fourth times in a row. It's not what we wanted to see. So it's good they've made that that jump in their progression. Um, and as an organisation, they're on the up. So they'll be getting some confidence internally and um, that just bodes well for teams. You know, when the confidence is up, results tend to happen a lot easier than when it's a tough slog. I mean, yeah. I hate to be in the Haas garage at the moment. I mean, just imagine <laughs> the demeanour of the mechanics and all the crap oh. that's going on. That just compounds the off-track issues that they're having. And it, yeah, I mean, it just yeah. – yeah. We haven't seen a lot from Gunter recently this year, have we? Because he's, nah. he's been very quiet. Normally Sky F1, love a bit of Gunter, love a bit of ha have a bit of a laugh, <laughs> someone who's not English. Uh, and they they haven't really shown them, which I think is a bit bizarre. But it would be difficult for him to try and keep the momentum in that team. And all he would be saying is, "It's all about 2022. All yep. it's yeah. about, guys. Yep. Don't even Absolutely. think about this year. We'll just you'll get a paycheck. Don't worry yep. about it. Just feel like a, you're a government employee. Just feel do nothing. <laughs> turn and up, get go a, home. Turn up, get a paycheck, and then go home again." Yes, yep. Campy, I would know all about that before you have a crack at me. Uh, so the starting grid. <laughs> you still Max Lewis, are you, Jim? Bottas, Gasly, Leclerc, Sainz, Giovinazzi, Ocon, Alonso, Ricardo, Russell, Stroll, Norris, Latifi, Sonoda, Perez, Vettel, Kubica, who I'm going to talk about in a second, Schumacher, yeah. and Mazepin. So, of course, obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but unfortunately, uh, Kimi has already retired. Uh, he's gone. I don't <laughs> goodbyes. I can't be bothered. I'm not going to do anything else with this car. He uh, he's tested positive for COVID-19, which is not good, and wish him a speedy recovery. But uh, Kubitz has stepped into the car, which really annoyed Callum Eilat because he wasn't uh, on for for the reserve driver for that weekend. But that's okay because he's now going to be driving for IndyCar. Um, congratulations to him. Go off and do well over there. We've seen people like Grosjean do well. So, you know, you weren't ever probably, unfortunately, getting an F1 seat, Callum. Yeah. See you later. Uh, but Kupitza, 18th. He wouldn't, it wasn't too far off the pace, really. I know he's no. had the the bloody horses behind him, but you saw people in the past like uh, groundskeeper Deresta when um, he had to jump into the Williams. <laughs> uh, all those yeah. years ago uh, when Massa was out, being was was ill. He was at the very, very, very back of, of the pack. So, you know, good on you, Robert. I'm I'm here for that. Tom, what did yeah. you think, Tommy T? Big fan. It's always good to see Robert. Like, I don't think there's anyone that doesn't like him. Oh. He's such a legend of the sport. And for what he's been through, it's just good to see him again and go, oh, it's another chance to celebrate such a great guy back in the sport. And if he can have a little, have a run, do a bit better, don't come last, I think that's a win for him. He'll be stoked. Yeah. What do you think, Cappy? Yeah, stoked for him. Um, I'd much prefer to see Kimmy on the grid, but that's Kimmy. Are we gonna? Is he going to talk about it? No, next week <laughs> when he's back. Oh, how's your COVID? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but so we, I, I, may I open couldn't door. smoke as many durries as I would have otherwise. <laughs> but may, <laughs> may open the, may open the door for I lot next weekend. Yeah. Well, that's exactly right. I was going to say because yeah. COVID, it's not going anywhere anytime soon for Monza. Uh, it'd be good. Yeah, I think that'd be good for Ilot. I think, um, yes, he's going IndyCar and great, but he was a he's a very very solid driver in F2, yes. particularly yep. coming up against um, Mick Schumacher. Uh, no, it wasn't. He was Mick, Mick was up against his teammate, the American fella. Anyway, Ilot has been professional. Yep. Shane, if he can get a race and then pull a result out like Giovinazzi, that puts him. In the conversation, he'll rip up his IndyCar contract like that for an F1 drive. Um, but yeah, I would like to see I like get a drive over Kubica. I think. All right, well, let's talk about what we can see in the race, Tommy T. Uh, this is this is literally what it says on the F1 website. First lap, ding dong. <laughs> what? I Someone's know, ridiculous. not finished coding the website. Thanks, just Chris Bedlund. Big fan of Chris <laughs> Bedlund, but that was just a ridiculous thing to put on paper. Uh, I think it's, what he's trying to say is Max V Lewis. Uh, on the first lap, geez, you reckon? That's been the uh, point every bloody race uh, to this yeah. point. But uh, it is going to be about who can get a better start. Tommy T, you think Max is going to get a, a good start and we know he's a good starter. 
We Big know time. that he loves this track and he's going to have an extra tenth because of the home crowd advantage, an extra Big uh, time. potentially half a second if they all open their <laughs> flares at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I think Max is going to sail away like we've seen him do throughout the year when he does get good starts and no mechanical issues, etc. Like if he can get that lead, he'll just build. I think the issue we're going to have is you've got two Mercedes hot on his heels mm. who can play the strategy game. So just say whoever's in second pits, Max probably has to cover off leaving the guy in third to go long, you would think, and just it's going to be risky and maybe do, just go for a two-stop. Who knows? Well, I think Campy, Campy's going to recommend a two-stop. Is that well, right, Campy? There is a shadow Red Bull car behind, don't forget, in fourth, and Toto was very quick uh, to bring that up. We have uh, – Red Bull has another car there. It's just yeah. the Alpha Tauri. Um. I think it'll be a two-stop if we've got no incidents, just on tyre degradation. Yeah. Um, Guaranteed I mean, one stop then. <laughs> <laughs> Campy's as good as tyre predictions as Manus is at weather. Yeah. <laughs> Do we ever want rain again at any track? Pre-put oh. yourself in the bin before you even mention it, right? Um, yeah, just in saying that, I just think this is going to be an incident-filled race yep. because of the unique uh, layout of the track, how tight it is. I think there's going to be guys trying to make passes, especially into turn three and on the final mm. turn, which I think is 13, on that bank up the straight. Uh, I think there's going to be some – I think there's going to be carnage. And I think when – as soon as there's a crash, we know that the track marshals are not as good as they are in, say, Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> so that politely <laughs> – I think there's going to be red flags all the time. I think we're going to see two or three. I think the yep. smallest incidents are going to bring out safety cars and red flags, which will make it a one-stop. In saying yes. that, I think no matter what your strategy is, if you're not in the top three, is stay out for as long as possible because you're going to get to change your tyres under the red flag conditions and yep. that will negate your pit stop. Um, hopefully it happens, you know, hope, when's the first window about lap? 15 to 23 for the uh, for the two stop. So hopefully Danny Rick goes out and does 30 laps and then an incident happens and he gets his red yep. flag. So he's got yep. on track position. Um, yeah. And hopefully there's another red flag further up the race, further up the road too. So and everyone can uh, go back on softs and yeah. I mean it could be one of those could be one of those races. But you tell me it's gonna be a late night campy, is that what you're telling me? Oh, absolutely. Obviously. <laughs> it's Formula <laughs> One sick. I thought yeah. everyone's scared of its own shadow at the moment. Uh, <laughs> Michael Massey, jeez. He's uh, not anyway, too well, look, is he? it'll be a good race. Uh, we didn't talk about Max's. Uh, Max in qualifying, jeez, he's a star. Yeah. Jeez, uh, but Hamilton's lap to be within, you know, 38, yep. 1,000. Huge. Oh. You know what? I think if Max wins, we'll sit back tomorrow and go, he was never going to lose his home race. I think if Lewis wins, like he couldn't write a better script, right? Can you imagine the booze if Lewis oh, wins? Man, oh, he'd need to get a helicopter out of the track, wouldn't he? I mean, but <laughs> Lewis, we know Lewis is capable of these results. Big yep. time. And, um, you know, in his mind, he lost out last weekend when he probably shouldn't have been. He lost five points in the um, in the standings that he, in his own mind, should never have lost. So, you know, this is really and once he, again he he's writing it. a once again he's writing a script to say I'm the underdog here and I'm going to prove you wrong again and it wouldn't surprise me if he gets the start and then just controls the race from out front because Max can't get quick enough to him. This would be yeah. the race he wants to win all year. Let's be honest, big time, yeah, especially yeah. ahead of the crowd. Although the crowd wasn't too booey. Luckily, we didn't have Johnny Herbert saying no, guys, stop it. Well, someone did. Whoever was the post qualifying interview, yeah, 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 he, he was the type of he show. handled it pretty exactly. Yeah. But well, let him Lewis move. came out and was a good guy to the crowd. He was like, yeah. Yeah, thanks, everyone. It's, it's good. And the crowd were like, oh, damn being you, nice. Lewis. Damn it. Stop being nice to me. <laughs> I really <laughs> like you, Lewis, but I don't want to. <laughs> At the crowd. Uh, how, yeah, so was the guy, how was the guy that got that sign and flew it above uh, the Dutch track last night? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Excellent. That's great yes. troll. What did I say? Seven times world champion, <laughs> LH. 
Yeah. Star or something. Yeah. Big fan. Yeah, Steve, what a troll. Guy. you got to do it. <laughs> Love it. got to do it if Love you can it. afford it. Uh, yeah. Overtaking, as you said, will be difficult. be interesting to see if Gasly can be uh, on for a podium and if uh, Red Bull start to use him as that chess piece, that rear gunner, as we just mentioned before. If anything happens to Bottas, and we know, I mean, Bottas is resigned to the fact that this is his last couple of races in a Mercedes. Geez, wouldn't it be nice for him to get out in front and win this ahead of mm. then them announcing that he's leaving? Um, yeah. That would also be one hell of a story. Uh, and we know Perez is, has a really hard job to do. Starting from 16th, Campy, as you said earlier, trying to get to the points. Uh, that's a, a big six positions with the likes of Norris uh, and Danny Rick ahead of him. And we know Russell's a good defender too. So, you know, that's going to be difficult. It's going to be very, very difficult. And lots of safety cars, probably lots of red flags. Well, lads, that is the pre-drinks episode. Thank you for that. Uh, of course, in only 12 hours time as we record this, 11 p.m. in Australian Eastern time to watch the race, which means there'll definitely be lots of red flags and we won't be going to bed till 2 o'clock in the morning. Classic. Uh, but hey, jump across to our Discord server. If you're not already there, it's a great place to chat with like-minded people. We've got just under 200 people uh, of a race weekend having an absolute blast. I love it. Candy loves it. Tommy T doesn't log on, but when he does log on, he loves I it I lost too. my password. I found it again, though. I'm Classic. back. Uh, <laughs> Sounds of like course, me. Don't forget to update your fantasy team name. Uh, we're here for it. Campy, is, that's his favourite part of a Monday morning, isn't it, Campy? Yeah, not. <laughs> <laughs> and that utter disappointment yet again it's time to end so, lads thank you so much and look forward to talking about the post race oh, chat sorry. in only a couple of hours time <laughs>